know the IRS is smart enough to keep up with it. Right. Fine. She's, okay. She's so, a good guy. Yeah, yeah, it's all just hanging on. They don't look fine. So, they don't want to look back so it, but it ain't her fault even if they said it. Right. So, so, so who's there? Fine. Except for, except for I know the answer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what's the answer? <laughs> I know that's not going to be a rollover all right. Yeah. Right? Because I asked enough questions to know that it's not a rollover all right. Don't you have to empty a penny sooner than yeah. a regular? Well, yeah. Well, with the, since her mother died in 2000, before 2019, then, they, then you had a lifetime to draw it down. Yeah. But... But the rule with that was, during that period of time, is you had to take a smaller payment for, for the rest of your life. But if you didn't do that, you automatically went to the five-year program, which means you had to have the account emptied in five years. Oh, well, since she's missed a couple of years has been at Schwab, then that's going to cause a problem. Well, I'm just going to take it all out. <laughs> no, no. Okay. You get just killed in taxes. Killed. Yeah. And she's already... She's 69 years old. She makes it. She draws a thousand, a little over a thousand dollars a month from Social Security, and she's a real estate agent. And that's it. That's all for her income. And she lives on a 60, 6,500 square foot house, 150 acres. And I told her, I said, "Well, are you, I asked her, are you getting money from any of these Schwab accounts?" She said, "No." So I said, "I can start sending about two thousand, twenty-five hundred a month off this, and that'll it'll last you forever if we do it that way." But the issue is, if I don't help her, she's going to hurt herself. Mm -hmm. Because she's, she's going to do something stupid. She's going to panic. And she's going to take it all out for the bank. Okay. And then have to pay 200 grand in taxes yeah. that she doesn't have. Okay. And then be completely broke in a couple of years. And then, then what's she going to be? I had one case where it took me two years to find all this. I had a, one of my clients was the great niece. And this lady died, and it took us two years to be working with it to find all our accounts. But I want you to see that because the crucial part about dealing with clients and money is you got to ask where the money came from. Let's say Mike has a 401k at Delft, yep. and he retired. Then he can do he can move the money from his 401k at Delft to, to him, which is our, uh, would it be a rollover IRA. Right. That's it, registered to him. Right. But if he, he and Patty passes away and the money moves to his daughters, then it has to become a beneficiary. It, the rollover IRA now becomes a beneficiary's IRA with the daughter's name on it. It's an error, but the, the issue is, and here's where I, I was thinking, you know, if Schwab was one that had screwed it up, the angle I was going to go at Schwab is, is this client's, it's going to be hard because she's going to have to take more money out of these IRAs than was intended and have to pay more money in taxes than she was supposed to do. Right. Like when you do a, a Roth IRA and the person stopped working at that job and, <clears throat> and they stay up. Oh, yeah. I, they're out, I mean, stay up running the Roth, but they don't even work, get no earned income. Yeah. I bet that. What do you find out? Like $500 a month going to the Roth IRA and you find out they retired two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> you guys know, a rip off. Okay. Uh, but it's a ripoff. It's, it represents five percent of your house payment. So it's better to pay that than twenty percent down to offset it. Let's look at our options. Okay. So part of part of the way we'll offset what we need to make your payment will be take a monthly check. We'll take a monthly check off the money that you get. They saw also charging a seven point seven five percent interest rate on the. Building loan with the, with, with eight hundred plus credit score mm -hmm. and fifty thousand dollars debt and no debt. You don't need to be tying fifty thousand dollars up in this house. The objective is to do their first mortgage and get the fifty thousand dollars back out of their house so they can take that money. Okay, now so that's what we're accomplishing. Now we also are, are at a point where interest rates have been going up. The more money you put in the closing, the lower your interest rate is and your lower your payment is, right? The problem is, is that it gets to the point where it's the amount of money you're putting in to get the lower payment doesn't offset really what you're trying to accomplish. So let's go and look at the lower rate that we had with the bigger down payment. Yes. Okay. Let's start with that. Because what we're going to do is take notes and see how much of a difference there is by having a big down payment. 
happens if we just all they want. leave it at two hundred thirty nine thousand dollars and yeah, but the, the, see, you're giving away the money. You don't want to do that. Yeah. So <laughs> because you, the high, the two thousand dollar a month house note is just scaring the crap out of us. I'll tell you my personal story. Okay, when I built my house down in Upson County in two thousand uh, two thousand six. I was building a 3,300 square foot house. I just bought 100 acres. And I was building this house. Now, you got to re realize that this is, y'all, who's been to my house? It's not a mansion. Okay. But, but it, to me, it was the nicest house I'd ever lived in. Okay. So it scared me. I remember standing in my kitchen as it was just about to be completed. And I thought, wow. <laughs> I, and and at the time I was building my house, China had bought up all the copper. Okay, so a roll of copper in my house. The wire that originally was going to my house was eighty dollars roll. When I was putting my building my house, it was two hundred forty dollars roll. Okay, masonite. I nearly did not get doors for my house because China was buying up all the masonite. Okay, so all my doors cost more. Everything in my house cost way more than it was supposed to. Okay, so I had spent thirty thousand, and I spent, and I spared no expense on windows on my house. First of all, because I realized I wanted my house to be very uh, good with uh, heating and, and, and cooling, and where you lose most your heating and cooling is through your windows. So I spent thirty thousand dollars on windows in my house alone. Okay, I spent one 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 window alone. And this is in two thousand six, and one window by itself cost over two thousand dollars. Okay. So I spent a lot of money on windows. It was built well, two by twelves. I mean, it's it's, it's a solid house. It's not gonna move. Uh, but I remember, I stand there. I'm gonna spend. I think house cost me three hundred thirty thousand to build. Spend three hundred thirty thousand dollars on this house, and now I look at it. Here we are. How many years later? Three hundred thousand dollars on a house is nothing now. It's. But you know what? What happened is we made payments. And we kept it, and it was all right. Fair enough. It was no big deal. And now it's not considered to be a big house uh, as far as big payment or or big expensive house. That's your neighbor. Huh? It's a big house to your neighbors. Yeah, I do have the nicest house in the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. Rates will start going down about this time next year. Let's look at the worst case scenario with the lowest rate. Where, what's the rate on this one? It was uh, 6.625. 6 okay, so 6.625. What do we take to closing with this? Okay, you ready? Okay, so we're taking twenty thousand dollars to close. Okay, mm -hmm. and what is the payment? The payment is twenty one sixteen fifty one. That's not too bad. When you see two eighty nine, subtract fifty thousand from that number, because but because remember the fifty thousand of the two eighty nine is going to them. So, so they're really financing two thirty nine. Broker compensation discount. Points. That's how much it's costing them to get the six points. Where, where's the discount points? About three items down there. Oh, 66 See, yep. $400. Yep. Which isn't huge. No. Well, but, but you get down to the bottom of the page and look how much cash the clients take home. 268 459 20 the very bottom number. To pay off the loan. The 2239 Yeah. And the 20000 all the closing costs come out of cash to find. This is the one with the lower rate. And this actually doesn't look that bad to me. Right. But but remember but but remember we're also whatever amount of money you have left over, mm -hmm. okay. So let's say it's fifty thousand. We'll be able to take two fifty to three hundred dollars a month off that to offset it. So so you're going to get three hundred dollars a month amount off your investment every month to offset this. So so okay. whatever number you see, subtract three hundred. So there, there's the lowest rate, 6.625, right? So let's go to a higher rate. Okay. Let's go to the next one. All right. The appraisal comes back at a higher rate, $1,000, too. Okay. Yeah. How does that help? That's what I'm trying to figure Because out. now your DTI, your debt to income is lower, and then you have a higher uh, amount of value versus... So you could probably... Yeah. So, and so have left, less to come to this closing with. Okay. And, and probably wouldn't Maybe have no chance of ever paying... Uh, uh, Came up. So the, the, the appraisal is going to have a big effect. Yeah. See these numbers right here? Mm -hmm. When we do mortgage loans, this is this is all the different rates you get. 6.99, 7.125, mm -hmm. whatever. 
right? And this is, shows the APR. And see this, see this number here? See how this number is a red number, and this number is a green number? With, where you see the green is that's what money you get back, back to you at close. 599, the APR is actually after everything's. Your payment is 1761, but that's not bad. Mm -hmm. Your PITI at, or, is 23. Well, this counts insurance, mm -hmm. mortgage, and home. Yeah. Oh, that's just PIP. That's it's not that. clear. Uh, property tax mm -hmm. and homeowner's insurance. Homeowner's insurance is too low. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But property tax is probably too high. Mm -hmm. We did 5.99 after the fees and everything involved. The, the, she's buying down points, right? Because the, the, it's really supposed to be in the sixes or low sevens. So by buying down the points is 5.99, you're, you're paying money to do that, plus you're paying all the other costs involved. So the total amount comes closing with 18,191, 6.25. So now her payment is about, what was the payment on that one? 2370, wasn't it? Yeah, so it's about $50, 60 more a month house payment, right? She said 85 grand. So right here, 7125, yeah, yeah, right seven five. that's going to cost you 5 Okay, and... Total payment on the the five nine nine was what? Yeah, no, it was twenty three something. Yeah, it was twenty three something. Mm -hmm. So it was about two hundred dollars more, uh -huh. or three hundred dollars worth of money, right? Right. So, but she would only go to closing the ten thousand versus twenty thousand, okay. which gives her two hundred dollars more a month. Wow. The difference is you get to keep ten thousand more dollars, <laughs> and so this is what you got to keep in mind: is I ran the numbers and I said if we would have put Fifty thousand dollars in it, and then drew out two fifty a month. So what it what it comes out to is you put in fifty, and I went back to two thousand thirty ten years. You would have taken out thirty over ten years, but your account would still be worth eighty four. Which means we'll still have whatever number you see as far as the house payment is concerned. You're going to get two hundred fifty dollars sent to you in your check account every month to no, no, cover part of your cost. And at the end, you still have fifty thousand dollars. If you put the money in the house, you can't even put your hands on that money. If the money, once you put that money down in that house, that's it. But what if he loses his job or something? Then you had all the fifty thousand tied up the house. Yeah. You can't make the house payment. The bank has to keep the house and the fifty thousand dollars. We don't want that. So this way, if something did happen to him, and you can make any of the house payments other than using this money, you could do that for a long time. It should make you more nervous to put more money down. Yeah.